we are very happy to virtually be here today and introduce you to our launch event of our XYZ Talks. Um, we have a very exciting semester of X Labs ahead of us where we will focus on innovative and sustainable solutions. Um, I would like to uh, introduce you to two of my classmates who will start by explaining to you what we are doing here today, what this master is about, and our and director of the program, Professor Layona, is also here with us today to give you some details on how this master is structured and who, how he came up with this creative idea. Um, after that, we are very happy and honored to have three guest speakers with us today um, that are leaders of some of the most hi highly known and successful innovative firms within the industry. But uh, first off, let me introduce you to Margarita, uh, my friend and classmate, and she will tell you what we're going to do here today. Thank you, Clara. Hi, everyone. Um, when you decided to participate to this initiative, uh, you might have wondered what these uh, three letters put together stand for. Let me explain to you. These three letters refer to the three generations X, Y, and Z. The first one, uh, including those born within 1965 and 1980. The second, uh, 1981 and 1995, 96. And then the last one, our generation, those born within 1995, 96 and 2010. Today, you are participating to the first event of the XYZ Talks, a series of online meetings aimed at bringing together precisely these uh, three generations. And with the LDIS XYZ Talks, you will have the opportunity to learn from the X generation, to act as the Y generation, and to think like the Z generation. How will it work? During these meetings, representatives of each generation will gather together and discuss intergenerational ideas and um, to address the challenges that future leaders of the transition uh, will have to face. Facing new challenges uh, will require us to master emerging technologies and uh, disruptive business models and also to foster cooperation between multiple stakeholders, designing new forms of uh, sustainable and inclusive partnerships. And this is what we do in our master's degree. In particular, the so-called X Labs, as Anastasia will explain to you, uh, represent a unique training ground to see this intergenerational collaboration take shape. These three generations, but particularly generation Y and Z, will have to collaborate to face together this ever faster changing environment in which innovation, sustainability and uh, responsibility to future generations meet. This intergenerational approach, however, does not represent a challenge for enrolled LDIS students only, uh, but this is something I will tell you in a bit. Thank you, Margarita. Also, for everyone that has questions, we have the checkbox uh, on the right side. So in any case you have any questions, feel free to type them in. And at the end of this meeting or launch event, we will uh, answer or try to answer them all. Um, next on is our professor and director of the program, Professor Layona, and he will present to you the LDIS program um, in the next minutes. Okay, thank you, Clara and Margarita, and of course, Anastasia and all of our uh, distinguished uh, guests. Uh, I will just explain briefly in uh, five minutes the essence of, uh, of this program, Global Digital Innovation and Sustainability, within which uh, the X Labs uh, are one of the key uh, building blocks. Uh, the idea of, uh, of, of, this, of this program is to, to create, of course, to tackle the challenges that digital transformation and sustainable development uh, will pose to the industry, the society, and of course, institutional organizations. And this was uh, a program that was designed way before uh, COVID-19 made clear how important it is uh, to uh, uh, prepare the transition for digital transformation and sustainable development. But still, one of the key aspects and unique aspects of this uh, very interdisciplinary uh, program is the fact that uh, we created uh, uh, a, I would say, a melting pot of disciplines, uh, business, uh, policy, technological, but also law. Why law? 
Well, we, based on uh, uh, a series of interviews and also the evidence that is uh, in the scientific literature, published also by the Harvard Business Review, we, the, the, this evidence revealed that uh, a lot of managers of uh, uh, high growth uh, industries have some legal expertise. Perhaps this is due to the fact that uh, uh, law or legal skills, legal expertise, even though you are not a lawyer, helps you navigate the transition a little bit better, given the uncertainty, the complexity, and the risks that are normally associated with, uh, with the transition process. The other unique aspects about this program is what we call the job on the training uh, approach. Normally firms say that uh, students are trained on the job and that's you know, partly true. What the, we tried to do was to anticipate this uh, uh, encounter with the uh, professional mentors like uh, Enrico, Fabio and Francesco and make them become uh, our uh, professors. They are deeply involved in, uh, in, our, in our program, they, they give classes, they, they serve on the steering committee, they are very active as professional mentors also within uh, the X labs and other applied activities. And these applied activities that we talk about in a few minutes uh, really are the characteristic of this program, enabling our students to start preparing for the future by producing uh, proof of concept of new startups, new business units, new legal and uh, business uh, partnerships so that they can uh, work on these ideas during the, the course of the Master of, uh, of Science and perhaps use this, this work as the basis of their final project work, which replaces the normal thesis at the end of the... And then the last point is about why in Rome or why at Lewis. We believe that Rome has been, uh, uh, can be, uh, the, the, the center of uh, this new economic and uh, um, institutional and social paradigm uh, for many reasons. It was also, it is also a place and a city that has uh, recovered and is recovering and is facing the, the pandemic quite, uh, quite, quite good, quite well, and uh, even better than many other cities in the world in terms of also the, for instance, the, the spread of the vaccination uh, process. And we think that also a lot of the global operators of uh, uh, the digital and, and especially the sustainable innovation uh, transition are placed, uh, are situated, are located in, in Rome. And the examples are in the room. Uh, NLX, uh, Qualcomm, and uh, Fabio Droiani have, they, and, uh, BIP have their uh, headquarters in Rome. So that's for me for now. That's all for me. Thank you, Professor. And um, we are pleased to now hear from my friend and colleague, Anna, who is introducing everyone to the challenges and yeah, to six broad challenges these X labs uh, have um, ahead of us in this semester. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Hope you can see it. Um, I'm going to explain more about XLA. Students will work in groups with private, public, and civil actors. During the co-design session, they will collaborate with an experimentalist approach to generate new ideas and innovation. The purpose is to expose students to today's work environments, which will help to forge the necessary skills for their work experience. They will live during the internship period and for the final project work. Uh, innovation will be the driver of the multi-sectoral and multiple actors approach that uh, will let the students catch nowadays opportunities to come up with original and factual contribution through digital tools and mixed methods. Um, as for uh, XLA project cycle, um, which you can see on this slide, uh, on the kickoff meeting of the partners, we launched their workshops and the challenges. Then, uh, during the two months, uh, each X lab will work separately. All students will get the opportunity to gain awarenesses and analyze the best solutions for each sector. In the end, the groups will present the proof of the concept, so regulation or policy proposal, startup concept, in a final pitch. 
giving the possibility to students uh, to receive feedbacks from a jury of experts and uh, institutional partners. And um, now I'm going to explain you um, six cluster. As you have heard, there are six cluster which aim to answer to specific sector challenges and develop future-proof ideas in these areas. The first cluster is future of um, cities and regions. This X lab will focus on the urban mobility challenge, traffic and urban solutions. Their partners will be RAPDEV Enea and Enelix. Uh, the second X lab uh, is the future of Earth. This X lab will define new solutions to enhance tourism, sustainability, and agri food services. Collaboration with World Bank, uh, Confra Agricultura, and Agenda Tevere will help students to generate future proof ideas. Uh, the XLAB Future of Industry and Manufacturing aims to find sustainable and innovative way to refinance innovation in the manufacturing sector. The XLAB will test the application of new technologies, business models that can support the achievement of the ecological transition, thanks to uh, the rede redefinition of company structures. So this cluster will collaborate with Ernst & Young. Um, the fourth X lab, uh, the future of well-being, will focus on developing innovation in the field of wellness. The purpose is to transform health and healthcare as an engine of sustainable development after COVID-19. So the main partner for this cluster will be Entity Data. Um, the X lab, the future of automotive and transportation, will address specifically new solution for electric and autonomous driving. And Alex and Qualcomm will be their main experts for this cluster. And the last one, but not the least, uh, the XLAB for future energy uh, telcos and networks will work on implementation alternative solution for developed sustainable buildings and neighborhoods, thanks to the development of smart energy communities. Partner for this cluster will be in LX, BIP, and in A. Thank you for your attention. Now I give the floor to my colleague Clara. Thank you, Anna. So as you all can see, we have an exciting and challenging time ahead of us, but we can't wait and um, we're eager to follow. But for now, uh, let's focus on the highlight of today's event. Um, I'm happy to introduce to you our three guest speakers. Uh, we are able to ask each of them two questions for now. And by that, we'll try to challenge them a bit and give us insights on um, their career and their firms, of course. Um, first off, I would like to welcome Fabio Triani, the co-founder and CEO of BIP. Welcome, and I hope you are well, and we're happy to have you here with us today. Thank you, um, Clara. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, hello. Good afternoon. Um, if it's okay with you, I would just shoot right ahead oh, please. and <laughs> ask you our first question. Yeah, you wrote a book in 2005, Chief Information Officer, The Challenge um, of Pragmatic Innovation. In that book, you explained that the winning model was based on the ability to balance operational reality and the drive for technological innovation. So now it's 16 years later, uh, what has changed in the sector or what has changed for you? <laughs> Uh, thank you. A very interesting question. Um, everything has changed. I mean, uh, between then and now, uh, a revolution has happened. Uh, there was the, uh, the mantra was, uh, let's look at innovation and be practical. Uh, that, uh, that was uh, in a period where innovation had a certain speed. Uh, what we experienced in, uh, in those last years is that the speed of innovation has uh, has gone exponential, uh, as you, the title of your X Lab uh, uh, stands for. Um, a set of exponential technologies transformed completely uh, the world of business and the life uh, of everyone. Uh, and uh, it's not any longer a matter of be practical. Is a, a, a now the the challenge is understanding uh, the speed of innovation and where is uh, it is going. Uh, that is changing uh, the life, this is changing the work, uh, the way of working. Uh, and in order to understand that, uh, the uh, sense of being uh, practical and, and uh, being uh, able to uh, apply those, uh, those, uh, those technologies to a world that was not technological um, uh, has, uh, has completely changed. 
Now you need to have vision. Uh, you need to have uh, the capability to read in trends because what's happening uh, today is may really change completely the, uh, the, the landmark and, uh, and the, uh, the scenario ahead. You need to look at uh, companies that uh, were not even present or at most they were very small in 2005 and now they are uh, the, probably the, uh, the largest company in the world. I'm talking about uh, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, uh, Apple, Facebook, no? the, uh, the mega for Ega for whatever they are, they are called. Um, those companies right now are investing or have invested 60 trillions in, uh, in, uh, in uh, researching the artificial intelligence that was uh, still at the, at the time at the very a technology at the infancy and in those 15 years now is the technology that's going to be shaping our life in the futures. Um, uh, in 2005, the, the startup movement was uh, at the very beginning. Uh, startups that are uh, the uh, it's entrepreneurship using technology to create new companies now is uh, is pervasive is uh, is influencing the way uh, companies and uh, and the business is uh, is innovating. Uh, so the, uh, the the real the real uh, the real step has been is not any longer a matter of uh, be patient and practical. It's a matter of stay ahead of uh, of this innovation. The innovation now is also pervasive, uh, is everywhere, uh, and uh, is in the house, in the, is in, in the factories, is in the, uh, in the energy networks, uh, is in your bike, in your suits, uh, it's everywhere. I mean, and in your watch, in your car. I mean, it's now, uh, the definition of a car is, uh, the, normally is, is an iPad with, uh, with wheels, okay? And uh, beyond being pervasive, it is, it is um, as a capacity, because of the Moore law that is much, much better now. I mean, it's what you can do with, with technology now is, uh, is uh, it's much easier. And in fact, uh, it's much, it's more friendly than it was before. I mean, it's, uh, uh, when we, we started Beep, I mean, when we, uh, we launched Beep in 2003, the, uh, the challenge was, I need to create a bridge and Beep state business integration. I need to create a bridge between the user of the innovation and, uh, and the creator of the innovation on, on technology. Uh, now, technology is very friendly. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's very usable. Uh, it, we are in the end of the era of the heavy coding. We are in the era of uh, low coding, of the smart integration and, uh, and the user-driven uh, user technology. Uh, so uh, in order to use it, uh, not, you don't have to be practical. You need to, you need to be, uh, multidisciplinary. I mean, in order to use innovation and technology, you need to uh, understand behavior of the end user. You need to be an architect rather than a coder. Uh, you need to be an orchestrator of those technologies because the code is already there, uh, ready to be used. And uh, you need to be able to teach how to use this technology to people because uh, it's very easy and, uh, and humanity can really leap forward if they are able to uh, understand how to be augmented by those, uh, by those innovation. So in, uh, in summary, a big, big change, a completely new uh, landscape. Thank you very much. Um, that was a fascinating answer. And as you say, it is um, changing fast, even sometimes faster than we think, especially the new challenges with uh, AI bring me right next to my next question, because um, intelligent buildings, robots, well-oriented AI power decisions. So the attention to each one experiences are changing in positive terms, um, our life and our economics. These are like the key technologies of our expertise. Could you tell us what, according to you, are the principal benefits of these new technologies and the risks? Uh Mostly benefits. I mean, it's the uh, the aim is to simplify life and to simplify the work. So it's private life and work are the ones that are going to be benefit from those uh, from those technologies. Um, they will create more time for value added activities um, and uh, and also will give uh, uh, the chance to uh, enable really a change of perspective in. Um, both in the private life and in the work. I would like to mention a recent work we have done together with FastWeb, uh, 
um, which uh, 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 allowed us to really, really enabling people to use new technology to change their perspective on how they're doing uh, their their work. I mean, with, with this uh, with this change management work, we uh, really helped uh, board. Uh, agents in the call center to become real uh, customer assistants and people that were uh, establishing uh, a, a very good relationship, direct relationship through the digital means uh, with clients to, uh, to whom they were giving uh, uh, value-added advice and, uh, and a very a much closer, a much closer uh, relationship. Uh, we were changing uh, uh, like 3G or, or, or old uh, uh, Dopino experts in the in the networks into 5G experts that were advising companies on how to leverage the uh, the power of 5G. I think that if used well, the uh, innovation can really change the perspective of uh, of someone. It is happening in the, in the normal life of everyone, uh, but especially in the the way people are going to uh, 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 work in the future. Uh, will um, will help them to uh, to live a better life, to do better works. The risk is uh, uh, the risk is uh, not to use the technology properly, uh, and which is uh, something that uh, it is happening. So uh, the one thing that uh, companies and people should really uh, uh, think about is uh, learning. There is a lot of education and learning to be done in order to be uh, able to um, to use uh, those technologies, and that's why I think uh, the X Y Z uh, and your your master and your initiatives is very is very important because uh, it is absolutely directed to uh, make uh, young generations aware of the uh, power and the potential of those new technologies. Again, thank you very much. Um, Triani for your um, answers and for your advice to us. It's very inspiring to listen yeah, to people who have been in this industry for such a long time and it just motivates us all to um, be here and to work hard. So thank you very much. Cool. Next on, we are talking to Dr. Francesco Venturini, the CEO of our partner company, NLX. Welcome and hello. 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 We can all see you and hear you now. Um, I would just start and ask you a hat was the first question. Um, it's about this pandemic and um, we talk about it a lot every day, but it also creates, yeah, uh, not, not only challenges, but also great potential to the industry. COVID-19 has been a worldwide like infamy and showing everyone the need for change towards a more sustainable world. So how can electrification and digitalization position themselves as solutions, meaning which are NLX future steps in this perspective? Okay, I'll answer your question if you, uh, actually Margarita will answer mine, um, which is uh, what generation letter are you if you're born after uh, 2010? The alpha generation. The alpha, so it starts with the yeah. Greek alphabet. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's important to know. So now I know uh, which generation is, is my son. Um, uh, the question is uh, is a good one. It's complex too. Um, there is definitely uh, okay. Number one, what is it? Probably we need to answer what explain what NLX is. Um, uh, NLX is the youngest uh, uh, daughter of uh, NL, and uh, NL uh, uh, is the biggest utility, uh, private utility uh, in the world outside of China. And just to give you a number, uh, we manage uh, something like uh, 75 million uh, uh, meters around the world, which uh, um, translates in uh, NL providing, supplying energy to almost half a billion people every day. Um, NLX uh, was uh, uh, incorporated with uh, one objective, uh, to provide, uh, to help actually uh, our customers in doing uh, mainly two things. One, save money uh, in uh, the day spending energy, and the other one to uh, reduce the uh, CO2 footprint uh, with new technology. Um, to achieve these two uh, objectives, we uh, use new technology, which is essentially digitalization. 
Um, and uh, um, the other thing that uh, we, uh, uh, as an NF group, uh, obviously push for is electrification. So electrification will help decarbonize our customers. Uh, and at the same time, digitalization will help them uh, in, uh, uh, in reducing the cost uh, that they spend uh, in, in energy in general. Now, um, talking about COVID, which is not uh, exactly uh, uh, the most uh, um, uh, uh, happy uh, topic uh, we, we, we could discuss about, the reality, uh, COVID uh, had a very important impact uh, on, uh, on NLX and uh, some uh, sectors uh, in, doing, in the industry in general. Um, so for a company that uh, like, like us, uh, pushing tremendously uh, towards uh, digitalization and electrification, uh, the results uh, in the past 12 months was, uh, in, I'm talking about in terms of uh, growth and profit, uh, were extremely, uh, extremely positive. Uh, why? Uh, because, uh, as we all know, um, digitalization, uh, um, there has been a very strong acceleration in general in the world towards uh, um, uh, digitalization. Uh, let's think about the work, uh, how we use uh, um, tools like Teams, uh, which has been incorporated in, in uh, Microsoft Office for a few years uh, now. but. Um, nobody really knew existed uh, until uh, 12 months ago. I, I discovered that Teams was part of my package uh, on my PC exactly 12 months ago. Um, let's think about uh, uh, school. Uh, my kids uh, never used uh, uh, Meet uh, on Google uh, or Zoom uh, before, uh, and they uh, had to uh, start doing it. Let's uh, think about Spotify or Netflix. Uh, uh, we've been uh, uh, abusing uh, of these uh, um, uh, digital entertainment uh, um, tools, uh, companies, I don't know you want to call them, channels uh, uh, more and more. So uh, COVID accelerated something that was already in progress um, and uh, we had to adapt to it. Uh, and that's number one. Number two is uh, electrification. So uh, the uh, people in the past 12 months really um, I don't know how to say it because it's very difficult to, uh, um, to understand what happened, but uh, there has been, uh, a, together with COVID, a, a desire of being more sustainable in this world. Uh, something that was not uh, a priority for many uh, until uh, a year ago, now suddenly is uh, a priority for many. And uh, if you have that priority in mind, uh, um, electrifying your consumptions, whatever it is, is extremely important. Obviously, when I'm talking about electrifying consumption to reduce CO2 footprint, I'm talking about green energy and therefore renewables. I'm not talking about coal, uh, gas, and, and so on. So a big shift uh, towards uh, um, electrification. And we can see this uh, in, uh, in the uh, uh, market cap that uh, uh, energy companies, uh, I'm, I'm talking about uh, companies that use power, energy, electricity, uh, as uh, they generate, uh, distribute, and sell uh, uh, electricity in the world, have uh, increased in value tremendously in the past 12 uh, months, uh, while at the same time, as you uh, probably well know, uh, the oil and gas sector has been uh, losing tremendously value. So NLX is exactly what I described, a company uh, pushing forward um, towards uh, electrification and digitalization. And that's why we are here together with you guys because we want uh, uh, the uh, creativity of the new generations uh, to be part uh, of our mission. Thank you very much. Um, we are pleased to be here with you and we are listening to all of you is uh, fascinating for us. We, we all are here because we want to make a change. And yeah, sometimes it's um, great to hear that what, what is possible with all these changes. So um, talking about change and challenges how can enterprises like yours stimulate the creation of new challenges? So meaning that, and if what is the best way to understand whether these challenges are better off tackled from an inside the firm or through an external solution like technology? Uh, I don't think there is a perfect answer to your question, to be honest. Uh, um, I think that we need to all understand that uh, um, the fundamentals are still there. So everything that you've been studying uh, uh, at school, uh, college, uh, is still true. 
when, when you're looking at competition, you always compete uh, on, on two things. Either you compete on cost or you compete um, on um, differentiating your product. And uh, usually it's very, very difficult to differentiate yourself. So at the end, you end up uh, uh, competing on cost uh, most of the times. Then this is a rule that we need to keep in mind in everything that we do, especially when uh, uh, you guys are gonna uh, work uh, in the X lab. It's not a matter of being creative uh, and, and finding the perfect, uh, um, uh, the perfect product, the perfect service, uh, uh, a fantastic new thing. Uh, you need to find somebody that can satisfy a need, uh, that can help uh, your customer to do something. Uh, remembering that uh, at the end, uh, it's uh, always uh, there. I mean, it's, it's a matter of costing less than others or being very different from others in such a way that you can satisfy a need and your customers uh, are more than willing to buy, uh, um, to buy from you. Um, what's changed from the past? Now, it's, everything is much faster. You have much, much more information, uh, which means that you know immediately what's happening on the other side of the world. Uh, it's very difficult to hide yourself, and that's, that makes differentiating yourself even more difficult than it was before. So um, if you're talking about innovation, there is not the perfect combination. Uh, there is not the perfect recipe. It's not an internal process or an external process. It's a matter of building uh, the best ecosystem uh, that you can possibly build. A lot of companies fail in building the ecosystem. And the ecosystem is made of uh, your suppliers, your customers, uh, um, your colleges, uh, the, the people like you uh, who can bring uh, creative ideas, uh, um, staying, uh, uh, you know, always, always monitoring what's happening uh, uh, in, in your world, but also in the worlds that are very different from yours. Because very often, um, worlds that are very different from yours uh, can invade your space uh, in a matter of seconds. Uh, NLX is very active in financial services. It's almost a bank, nobody knows. Uh, but uh, we are uh, conquering uh, day after day uh, market share, uh, even in Italy. So it's very difficult to uh, foresee where the uh, uh, innovation is going to come from. The most important thing is leverage and diversity and making sure that uh, you have uh, uh, as many feet as possible in as many places as possible. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time and your inspiration. And uh, we're really happy to work with you in this upcoming semester. Unfortunately, it's not going to be me, but um, all my colleagues are really excited. So thank you so much for your time. Um, next on, uh, our final guest speaker. We are pleased and happy to welcome Enrico Salvatori. He's the Senior Vice President and President from Qualcomm EMEA. And we are happy to ask him also two questions here today. Hello and welcome. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Hello. So again, also to you, thank you for your time. We know it's valuable time and we appreciate that we can ask you these questions. So I will go right ahead. Uh, we know how Qualcomm is constantly committed to innovation. So how will 5G, uh, like 5G will, how will it change the world? Uh, what's the most important maker for 5G in progress? And yeah, can you ex uh, explore on that a bit for us? Yeah, thank you. So <clears throat> innovation, 5G. Definitely innovation is a part of uh, uh, the business model for us in Qualcomm. Innovation implies uh, ability to look at uh, problems with the new eyes, so uh, providing new solution of things that we already know, uh, addressing with new solution, new uh, approach, new uh, way to, to fix and to address the, the demand. So innovation, of course, for us is first of all technology, and that's where we work, but I think it's good to clarify immediately that innovation is not just technology. Innovation is also in terms of the business model. Innovation is in terms of the go-to-market. Innovation in terms of the policy to support the new business and the new approaches to the market. So I think just opening, this is why I look at this initiative with a an important contribution because we are looking for innovation also in terms of policy, 
in terms of the way uh, to regulate the new businesses. Anyhow, in terms of the technology for Qualcomm uh, innovation at the moment is 5G, 5G and AI. This is where we are investing more. 5G, we started 10 years ago, uh, participating, contributing to the standardization, to the 5G standard in 3GPP, and then moving from standardization, algorithms, uh, architecture, uh, new concept to productization. So to have a product that is supported the 5G modem and technology, to the point that today you are using the 5G smartphones that um, many of them are based on Qualcomm technology. So long path uh, to make the 5G technology a product. 5G is the first step uh, from our uh, perspective in terms of uh, what can be done uh, revolution on uh, our day-by-day uh, -day life. 5G is uh, covering the connectivity of the objects. So comparing what we can do with the 4G that uh, was focused on uh, connectivity among human beings, us, uh, the 5G is taking care of uh, objects, the things, the IoT. So once this uh, 5G connectivity among all the objects will be achieved, then uh, the next uh, demand is to provide some level of intelligence to the things, to the objects, and this is the AI. So really the combination of 5G connectivity plus AI is the platform to enable the precondition for the revolution in terms of everything. Quality of life for us, but also in terms of the way we do business, the way we live day by day. For Qualcomm perspective, technology and the building blocks in technology are maturing. I think some of the comments from my colleagues already expressed the fact that the technology is becoming user friendly. The point now, the focus for 5G is about the use case, the go to market, the how to use the technology. And this is also what I'm looking from the XLAC experience. So how to use the technology, how to regulate the technology in terms of uh, uh, go-to-market. So, for instance, uh, <clears throat> impact or area where we are working uh, already in terms of product. In the automotive, in the cars, making more and more uh, available AI. So we are already at the fifth generation of uh, AI architecture for our processor. So that uh, the cars can make uh, uh, autonomously decision about uh, traffic reaction or car to car communication, car to pedestrian, car to motorcycle, car to infrastructure, car to the cloud. Uh, all the ingredients that are enabling the car to make uh, autonomously a decision about what to do. So this is the AI for the cars, but uh, uh, same approach in the uh, industry automation. So how to make uh, a fully connected 5G manufacturing facility so that all the robots will be connected wireless because the 5G connectivity is providing not only the bandwidth, but also the low latency so that the machines can react real time to what is needed. Today, all of that can achieve only with cables. So when you have a, a fully uh, a wireless uh, manufacturing facility, all the robots can uh, be redistributed for the new manufacturing line in hours, comparing what today is being done in weeks. So more efficiency in the manufacturing uh, facility. So the, the 5G and the AI together will uh, um, are de facto already creating the precondition for uh, this uh, digital transformation. Digital transformation that uh, at the end of the day is uh, an in incredible important step to maintain the competitiveness of uh, our uh, industry. Industry, automotive industry in Europe, uh, or industry automation, uh, because uh, the other continents are uh, migrating, in particular in China, very fast to, to the 5G and to the uh, digital transformation. So that, that will be critical to maintain uh, state of the heart for uh, uh, many of the 
industries. We, we, we have an NXE and we're working also with Enel for the energy distribution, AI, 5G, ability to identify the fault in the network immediately because of the connectivity in 5G and also because of the local AI distributed across the network. That, that, those are facts that uh, can be achieved as a technology. So it's, it's a matter to translate in products and in a process to do it. So those are all elements that are already available and that we see accelerating more and more. Uh, 5G, there are studies, uh, HAS market, that is to uh, prospecting ability to bring by 2035 uh, uh, goods and services in the, in the region of 13, uh, one, three trillion US dollars. So, is going to be a, a huge uh, step forward uh, in terms of business and, and opportunities. And it's uh, very important to be part of it for all the continents. So 5G network uh, at its time is the precondition for the connectivity. It's like an infrastructure, like distributing the water, distributing the energy in order to be part of that. Uh, and this is uh, the digital transformation uh, summary. So uh, you ask it, what is the marker today to check the progress of, of this uh, development? Definitely step one is the coverage. So at the moment we don't have yet uh, coverage uh, uh, national level, continent level for 5G. But uh, the good news is that Europe uh, comparing what happened with the fourth generation 4G, that we've been uh, two years late comparing North America, uh, Europe uh, is uh, in the leading pack for deploying 5G and also Italy. Uh, with uh, 2019 starting the commercial services, 2020, and now 2021, the coverage is the focus of the activity, focusing on expanding the coverage, 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 and coverage. Why is it so important to have the network and the coverage preconditions for uh, introducing also the new industry players? Because innovation and technology is a kind of self-repeating process. When you have the new technology available, 5G coverage, then you have the new business cases, the new opportunities, the new uh, business model, uh, a new go-to-market. It's not uh, by chance that uh, uh, Amazon, uh, Google, Facebook, Apple, all of them are based in US. US had uh, two years advantage versus Europe and other continents in terms of 5G net, 4G networks. And they've been able to de develop a new business case, a new uh, business model thanks to that. So 5G is the same step. It's a new opportunity for everybody to be part of the new industry, the new economy that uh, 5G will uh, I mentioned before about the industry 4.0 and the, in the manufacturing facility. Uh, for 5G will give also an opportunity to revisit what is the geopolitics today. So we can bring to West also manufacturing on products because the new factories will be very much automated and we will be competitive also in Europe or North America for manufacturing goods compared to what is happening today in Asia. So th those are the preconditions why the 5G and AI together are so critical as a precondition for the new businesses that will come. Thank you very much for this precise and detailed answer. It's very interesting for us to, um, to see what's happening. You have talked a lot about um, competition, so competitive markets, but also about networks. And for us as students, it is, it is, um, yeah, it is a bit scary because we live in this um, world of education. It's a very safe place in a university, but at some point next year, we all want to go and enter the real world and uh, find a job. Um, so talking about these markets, um, there's a lot of an, a complex connection between universities and the job market. Many believe, uh, many students or people believe that there's a misalignment with, between the two. So meaning that there are some exceptions. Um, for example, one of these is represented by Luis. This is a reason why many of us chose this master because it's not, like our prof director said, it's not only um, learning on the job after class, but also within the university setting. So how can enterprises benefit from the advantage um, of a source uh, of innovation and growth, like such as 
offered by universities. So meaning how can the firms benefit from us being included in the process already now and not only when we enter the job market later? Well, uh, it's a, it's a two-way street. I think uh, Margherita initially explained uh, X gen uh, teaching to Z gen. I'm happy to talk uh, as a rep of the Z gen here and uh, we, we will learn also from, uh, uh, from you guys, uh, ladies. Uh, for us is, uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, competitiveness, uh, uh, competition in, in the market. Uh, it's actually fun. Uh, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> competition is like sport. So you want to be first, you want to have the best idea, you want to have the best product, you want to have the best solution. And uh, I think we need people that are very uh, opinionated, they have ideas that are able to fight and uh, uh, defend, stand up for, for own, their own ideas people that are uh, good in working together because the complexity of the job now implies uh, uh, to work as a team. Uh, nobody can be so <laughs> big ego to consider able to do everything by his own today anymore. So uh, communication, uh, team players, ability. Competition is, uh, again, uh, competition as a team. Competition in order to to bring the best value and the best solution. I think it's important also to be flexible uh, in, uh, and open in uh, uh, listening uh, to uh, ideas, not to, in Quattro sometimes when, when we do selection, uh, first question is that we don't like people uh, in love with the status quo. So we don't need people that are comfortable where we are. People that are also uh, very interested in uh, do new things, so innovation, do things in a different way because they want to find new solutions. For, uh, for us, why we're working with you, I think in particular this uh, 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 activity is uh, because I, I mentioned before, innovation is uh, first of all, uh, of course, where we are, is a, a trigger by the technology, but the technology is just the, the precondition in order to achieve uh, the product, the service, the application. It's not uh, uh, the end game, the technology. So uh, in order to facilitate and to enable that process that is going up to the service and application, is uh, critical to have uh, rules. So the policy, and that's why I think uh, this course is very uh, focused, uh, is a very part of what is going to be needed, what is needed today. I mean, in, in, the, in many of our, of our meetings uh, uh, internal where we discuss about technology, at the same time, we start immediately thinking, okay, but can we do that? Can we collect so many data? What is the privacy? What is the impact of homeless driving? Who is liable for the car crashing? in the middle of the highway, is our chipset, is the software, is the other. So there is an immediate link uh, to the rules and to the policy needed to manage uh, this uh, new uh, business case, new business model, new scenarios. Uh, we discuss a lot uh, uh, about the digital twin. Digital twin, all of us will have an identity you already have for uh, the so social media and uh, social network. Now, we have a very strong and solid uh, rules and policy for the physical identity, uh, ownership, property. Uh, why, when we enter in the, in, with the digital twin, uh, in the uh, digital identity, what, what are the rights, what are the rules, what is the policy that is ruling over there? That, that is totally greenfield. So you're welcome, your generation in particular, to work on that, to uh, establish the infrastructure and the, and the rules also for that uh, parallel uh, identity we will have, uh, more, all of us will have. So I, I think it's exciting, it's a, it's a new uh, scenario that uh, is bringing just new, new opportunities, new ideas and uh, new Competition as usual. I mean, you are, we are human beings, we compete, we like to be first, and we will continue doing that. Very true. Thank you very much, um, 
it's very really fascinating. And yeah, especially in this semester, we're focusing a lot on the legal backgrounds and policy. And um, yeah, I'm very eager to learn more about it. And it's very important and interesting for this whole industry. I agree. So we've talked about a lot about um, the different big industries and we've talked about North America and the big firms. So knowing that all of these firms were basically found in America, I would like to pose one last question to um, all our guest speakers. First, I would like to ask, um, so first I would like to pose this question to all of you and then uh, ask Dr. Venturini Salvatori to uh, start first by answering, uh, followed by Enrico Salvatori and then by you, sir, Fabio Troiani. And the question we would like to ask you, um, just really quick, because we're running out of time, um, if you could answer in, in, in 30 seconds, why prospective students should come to study in Rome and come to study in Rome at Louis, this, this specific topic? Uh, because Rome is a fantastic city. Uh, and, uh, and I agree. And, uh, and then Alex is here. So uh, I, I, I don't think that there is a better you know, better reasons uh, for uh, for coming to Lewis. Plus, you guys are, I mean, you are the living proof that uh, uh, it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful place to be. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, I think that uh, I would recommend to stay focused on a university that is uh, well connected to the uh, industries. Uh, and I think today discussion is a, is a, is a fact that is uh, uh, listening to the demand of, of the market of the industry. So this preparing you to the, uh, to the real world. I think uh, Rome, uh, uh, we, we discuss a lot uh, uh, about the COVID, the working from home. So it's, it's becoming clear that the location uh, uh, also in the future will be less relevant to uh, the activity even uh, in, the, in the office, in the industry, you, you can work from home. So uh, I think uh, that is also an opportunity to create a new ecosystem, uh, uh, comparing what has been so far in terms of uh, technology, uh, this is where, where I'm working. And uh, so I think uh, definitely Louis Rome uh, is, uh, has the potentiality to, to grow even more as an ecosystem. So I would go there. Thank you very much. So uh, finally, Mr. Trajani, do you also want to give us um, your perspective why future students should make the same decision I have not regretted for a second. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, I mean, let me start with a sentence said uh, by, I mean, in this hour, I learned something that, I mean, you are very good in making right questions. And uh, Cedric Price is an architect uh, back in the beginning of the century that said technology is the answer, but uh, which was the, the question. And uh, I think uh, that this lab is teaching you to uh, make the right questions, which is something that will help you in your uh, um, work life a lot. Uh, uh, people are not looking for solutions, believe me, they are looking for people that are able to put the right questions. And this is a very good uh, attitude of this new generation, the XYZ generation. They, they really put the right questions. I have three, three sons, and they are all in the same uh, uh, kind of range. And frankly, I'm fascinated by the questions they put to me. And when I make a, uh, a job interview, for the people, I mean, you know, we've been hiring a thousand people last year. I mean, so uh, it's, uh, it's impressive. I mean, I always listen to the questions people are making to me, not to the solution they are giving. So I think that the X Lab is a place where they're teaching you making the right questions and it's the right place to be. Thank you very much for your answer. I know this was a lot of uh, input for everyone. So this is why I would like to go back to Margarita for a second who will now give us a deeper insight to the XYZ camps and um, yeah, help future students to make this decision well. Thank you again, Clara. As I anticipated before, this intergenerational approach does not represent a challenge for currently enrolled LDIS students only. But, and to confirm this, I'm here to tell you that um, with this first XYZ uh, talk, uh, we, the students of LDIS, wanted to launch the XYZ.camp. We invite the future students to be directly involved in some of the X labs uh, and day-to-day -day activities. The only thing you have to do 
is um, go to the XYZ .camp website, fill in the form, and um, once you confirm your enrollment in the Law, Digital Innovation and Sustainability Master's degree, you will have the possibility to collaborate with us uh, in our X-Labs teams. In addition, I want to remind you that scholarships and uh, studentships uh, are available thanks both to our Athenium and um, some of LDIS partners, such as uh, Entity Data, um, EUI, and labgov.city, and Inuit. As I said, the, there will be many more XYZ talks. This was only the starting point. To have more information about this, you can always um, send us an email to the LDI, LDIS at Lewis and sign in the xyz.camp landing page. So I see my colleagues just sent all the useful links in the chat. You have a lot to entertain yourself with. So right now I will ask Professor Iaione to have a little Q&A session to answer all your doubts. Thank you. If there are any, because I think that the panel was pretty straightforward and received a lot of information and a lot of inspiring thoughts that uh, could convince uh, our students to engage actively in the X-Labs and also prospective students to, to join you folks in this uh, endeavor. And I hope that uh, you know, they will take advantage of this initiative uh, that we call the XYZ Camp. Uh, it's a way to basically give the opportunity to prospective students to be part of the X-Labs even though they, they are not still already enrolled. And yes, I want to underline also uh, the fact that the disclosure relationship and partnership with our, um, you know, the, the firms that are working with us led also to the possibility to have dedicated scholarships and also studentships. The main difference is that uh, in the second case, it's uh, uh, linked to also functions and roles that they will play in the management of the program and in the management of the projects that we will develop during the, way, the, the two years of uh, the program. If there are no questions, then Margarita, I'll leave the floor to you and to close up, basically. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we're for, her, for today, we are all very inspired. We got a lot of input. We got to sleep on it and then be motivated to start next week, Friday. Um, I can't wait. And um, I hope that some of the future students got inspired and want to join us for this upcoming and really interesting semester. Again, many thanks to your, uh, our guests, our professor, and of course, our guest speakers. It was a pleasure having you here. Very interesting thoughts and ideas. And I hope you all have a great afternoon and we see each other soon in Rome. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.